Welcome back to Eye on Africa here on France 24. I'm Shona Bhattacharya. Thanks so much for tuning in. Let's take a look at our top stories in this edition. At least 18 people are dead in Mogadishu's police academy after a suicide bomber detonated his explosive vest. The Shabab terrorist group claimed responsibility for the attack. Life in jail for raping girls as young as 18 months old. The guilty militiamen say they believed they were gaining protection from their enemies in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And in Sierra Leone, the government has created schools just for pregnant girls. But their rate of success is poor, and rights groups say they don't address the root of the problem. Another hit against Somalia's police forces. 18 people are dead and another 20 are wounded, according to police, after a suicide bomber blew himself up in the capital, Mogadishu. The assailant entered the country's main police academy wearing a disguise ahead of an early morning parade. Al-Qaeda-affiliated Al-Shabaab claimed responsibility for the attack. Clément Bonnereau has more. It was around breakfast time when the attack took place here inside the country's main police academy. Witnesses say officers were crowded into an open square ahead of their early morning parade. They were rehearsing for National Police Day celebrations later this month. Some of the police were already in lines and others were gathering when a man wearing a police uniform entered and blew himself up. Medics and ambulance teams rushed to the scene to take care of the wounded. Some of the officers who were killed were buried later on Thursday. Today he left the house and a few minutes later he was killed in an attack. He wanted to do something for his country, but today we're burying him. The Al-Shabaab militant group has claimed responsibility for the attack, describing it as a martyrdom operation. The group, which is linked to Al-Qaeda, carry out frequent bombings and attacks in the capital. In October, Al-Shabaab fighters stormed a hotel in Mogadishu, killing at least 20 people. However, the group has denied being behind a truck bomb attack in the city earlier that month that left at least 358 people dead. And in neighboring Somaliland, Musa Bihi Abdi was sworn in as president on Wednesday. Bihi is replacing Ahmed Mohamed Mohamud from the same Kumie party and will serve a five-year term. The self-proclaimed state broke away from Somalia in 1991 and is not recognized by the international community. Gaining that recognition is the major challenge of uh, his presidency. Calling on the United Nations to investigate, Tanzania's prime minister made the comments as he led hundreds of mourners in an emotional ceremony for the 15 Tanzanian peacekeepers killed last week in eastern Congo. The attack, believed to be carried out by one of the many rebel groups in the region, was the deadliest single assault on a UN peacekeeping mission in almost 25 years. The UN's Under Secretary General for Peacekeeping was also in attendance at the ceremony. I think it's important to underline that uh, attacking UN peacekeepers is a war crime and that uh, those responsible for these attacks have to be brought to justice. We agreed with His Excellency the Minister of Defence that we would uh, continue together as a UN family to uh, promote peace in the Democratic Republic of Congo and to protect the population of that country. A landmark court decision in the Congo. 11 militia fighters were jailed for life for raping dozens of little girls. The rapes occurred during ceremonies intended to give the men mys mystical protection against their enemies. The victims were as young as 18 months old. Human rights groups hailed the verdict. They say rape by armed groups is common and often goes unpunished in the Congo. Ever since those people were arrested, we had not seen any other case of sexual abuse of children. We are really happy about it. We bow to the decision while retaining our right to appeal to the higher court for those who were condemned for life. 
Members of the Army of Jesus militia were also convicted of murder, membership in a rebel movement, and possession of illegal weapons. Accusations of rape by Kenyan security forces. Human Rights Watch says Kenyan police raped, beat, and assaulted civilians during the recent election violence. The group put out a report following interviews with 65 women, three girls, and three men who say they were sexually attacked. Half accused policemen or men in uniform and said the attackers also tortured the women's children and husbands. Kenya's police chief dismissed the report, but the NGO stands by its findings. Many Kenyans know that police have committed a lot of human rights abuses, and there has been little accountability for those abuses. In this case, police committed a lot of sexual violence, so it is very difficult to tell a woman who has been raped by police to go and rape, to go and report the rape to a colleague of, you know, a possible uh, suspect. So that has been a big problem, and it continues to be a major problem. Asking for clemency, Zimbabwe's new leader Emerson Mnangagwa is calling for the removal of Western sanctions. Under former President Robert Mugabe, the European Union and United States imposed travel and economic embargoes on several ZANU-PF party officials, top military figures, as well as some government-owned firms. Mnangagwa blames those sanctions in part for the state of Zimbabwe's failing economy. In Sierra Leone, students who become pregnant are excluded from school. Since last year, the government has set up alternative schools just for them, and it's calling the program a success. But critics say the practice of excluding girls is discriminatory. It doesn't tackle the root causes of teen pregnancy and hurts girls' chances of completing their education. At 17 years old, Fatmata is pregnant with her second child. She had her first when she was 15. Both Fatmata and her cousin were forced to leave school when their pregnancy started to show because of a ban by the government, who considered girls like them a bad example to their peers. I wasn't happy because I could see my friends and the girls from my village going to school, but I couldn't because I was pregnant, and then I had to take care of my child. It's not what I wished, but I've got no other option. One in three women who fall pregnant in Sierra Leone are underage. Under international pressure not to stop these girls from receiving an education, last year the government set up alternative classes for them. This would allow them to continue going to school, but with a reduced curriculum and without needing to interact with their peers. The boys who get them pregnant, meanwhile, don't face the same restrictions. It's counterproductive to isolate a male teenager only because he has impregnated a female teenager. You are more or less, it's, it's two evils, okay? They are not pregnant, the male. The female they are, visibly. That's the difference there. The government says the scheme is a success because 5,000 of the 14,000 girls in the schools for young mothers last year later went back to mainstream education. But that still means more than half slipped through the net. The fact that they are pregnant doesn't mean that their education ends with that. So our position, and we have made it clear to the Minister of Education, is that we want these girls to be in school and not be discriminated. But at the same time, we are working in a context where the government is not actually allowing that. UNICEF backs the alternative schools as an interim measure, but says they don't address the root causes of teenage pregnancy. Sex education is still not taught in schools leaving NGOs to step in to provide this information. With funding for the special schools only running until next March, thousands of young girls like Fatmata may soon be left with no choice but to abandon their education completely. And that's the end of this edition of Eye on Africa. Mark Oman will be back with more news in just a few minutes. You stay with us.